Just don't let it fool you. It's just a vest. <laughs> <laughs> Looks puffy. No, I love it though. Yeah, yeah. Chris. Chris Fedor, Cleveland Account. Hey Donovan. We've spent a lot of time talking about late game execution. What was so different for you guys in the final five minutes tonight? Um, <clears throat> we were very, I want to say we were very precise with our movements. We knew exactly where we were going, how we were going to attack it, what they were doing. Um, and I think, you know, late game, we ran a few plays and it was like we ran it the same thing over and over again. And then we ran a counter, you know, same thing over and over again. We ran another counter. Um, me, like I said, me and DG playing off of each other, and then also adding J.A. in the middle. Now you got Ev cutting baseline. Like, there's so many threats, and you really have to pick and choose. And tonight was one of our, I would say, our best night executing, not even just in the fourth quarter, but throughout the whole game. And, you know, like I said, this is all just a learning process on what's going to continue to work. And there have been nights where it hasn't worked, and I think that's what has helped us get to this point. And we will, there's even more we can do out of what we executed tonight, which is, which is a great thing. Uh, but, you know, I think that's what you're seeing. What has made Lamar such a good fit with the other four in the starting lineup? He's Mr. Everything. You know, he's he's guarding, he's running the floor, he's he's making extra effort. You know, he's holding us accountable. Um, <laughs> he came to the huddle and said I was getting my ass bust when they scored on me twice. Like, and you know, I don't think anybody scored on me after that. Like, you know what I mean? But like, you you need a guy like that. You know, and I res I respect that and I appreciate that. Like, because and it wasn't just me like he's, he's told others but like you when you have a guy that's vocal about that you know and not afraid to speak to everybody on the team the same way you know it kind of lifts you up and gives your energy up and I think that's what you know he brings he brings a voice you know that's that's definitely needed an attitude of positivity um, <clears throat> accountability as well so it's not always just coming from JB you know and I think on the defensive end you know he held a, an all-star guard in Jamont, uh, DeJounte Murray to 4 of 18 you know he did a great job on the ball and made it made the night tough on him and he's done that on several occasions and you know you're seeing him play well in his minutes and his spots and I keep telling him to shoot the ball like you know he shot fakes a lot keeps on the shooting and trust it and that's going to come with time you know when you get out there you want to make the right play all the time but sometimes the right play is letting it fly and him and Isaac Okoro are always the first ones in the gym every day um, shooting the three ball getting extra work in so it's great to see them too especially but for more to join our starting lineup and to ex excel, you know, um, and have success. It's, it's great to see. Was he the one that was busting your ass in the huddle? No, no, no. He was. I, he was saying I was getting my ass bust oh. by the. the it was. Um, it was Griffin and uh, Murray. They hit two shots on me. He was like, like, what are you gonna do? Like, you know, you're gonna guard. You're gonna let them bust your ass. And you know, when that, I think honestly, like, I, I respond to that pretty well, and I appreciate that because you know that's something I haven't heard since Rick Pitino started screaming at me. So. <laughs> Um, I appreciate that when it's coming for your teammate, and that's what ultimately you're going to need when you want to get to the playoffs, get to the finals, get to that. Like you're going to need those moments where we lock in, um, and he's doing it down the line. And, and honestly, he's he's one of the best voices on this team in that regard for sure. Thank you. Kelsey. Kelsey Russo, The Athletic. Diamond, do you feel like you guys have started to rediscover that defensive identity of these last couple games? And if so, like how? Yeah, I think just kind of going back to our fundamentals. You know, it's keeping our man in front, you know, making the extra effort. Uh, when you lose five in a row, whatever it was, it's not, you know, it doesn't feel great. And, you know, we, we started the year off and everything felt easy, felt smooth, and that's not going to be all 82 games. You know, there's going to be moments where things start to go differently, and then how do you respond? And, you know, I think tonight we showed, or the past three nights we've showed grit and we've showed determination and getting back to ourselves. And the biggest thing for us is just finding a way to continuously keep that for a full 48. And I think this was our first time playing a full 48, you know, of, of solid defense and, and everything else, you know, offensively, you know, it, that's that's the easy part. I feel like, you know, for us, it's continuing to bring it on the defensive end and communicate, be there for each other, even through mistakes. Um, and I think that was something you're starting to see and we're continuing to get back to it. But we can't lose it, and that's the biggest thing. How helpful, though, is it having Jared back in there to anchor the defense? I, and, like, obviously, I you know you have other pieces to help, but when he's back in there, like, just how does that change you guys defensively? Yeah, you know, when you know you got guards who are dynamic, like Trey, Dejounte take in downhill, you know, all you got to do as a guard is kind of just stay in space and, and kind of funnel them down there and to, to both Ev and Jay. But when, you know, you noticed that when Jay was out, you know, things weren't, weren't too great. And, you know, it's 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 tough just to be down there when it's it's Ev and, say, a Lamar. You know, Lamar is not, you know, we're not seven feet, you know. So being able to have two of those guys down there in the, in the, the foundations of our defense, being able to have those two down there. Uh, but definitely with Jay back, you know, blocking shots, deterring shots, and even forcing guys to travel because they don't want to go up there for a shot. I think that's something that, you know, is, is un 
you don't notice it on the stat sheet, but you see it like when you're watching the game, and you know they bring it every night. Yeah, uh, Spencer. Spencer Davies, basketballers.com. How much of the element on defense is the physicality you guys have played with the last couple of games? Um, I think that's <clears throat> first and foremost. I think you know not reacting, but being the kind of dictating on the defensive end where guys are going, blowing up screens. You know, I, Isaac Okoro is probably the first person that comes to mind. It's because like you know he he had what four fouls, four fouls in like three minutes, or whatever. But he was continuously making it tough. You know, that's what we want, and understanding that you know some of them, you know we believe are offensive fouls and, and they didn't call it, but continuously playing through it. You know, the game that comes to mind for me is when we played Boston in the first quarter, we were being ultra aggressive and they started calling those fouls. Then the second quarter, we kind of got timid, you know, and laid back and then next thing you know, we're down 15. Then the rest of the game, third, fourth and uh, overtime, um, we started to really pick up our intensity on the defensive end and we come back and win. Um, so that's what we have to be. That's what we have to, to do. And, you know, from my, my time playing against the, the Cavs, you always understand that, you know, we're they're we're always going to be aggressive. We're always going to be finding ways to kind of dictate on the um, defensive end, and that's what we're starting to see over and over again. And we got to bring that every night. And then I got to ask you, just when Jetty has an open floor, do you guys notice the crowd? I don't like, even <laughs> run back on <laughs> offense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's why when I got the steal, I just threw it up there and just let him go, <laughs> let him go get it. Even when he got the foul on John, on John Collins, like you just throw it out there and you just know, like you know he's gonna go out there and finish. Um, he's he's also playing phenomenally on on both ends of the floor, doing a lot, um, especially when you go from DMP to playing a few minutes to not playing to playing like to be able to come out and give us the spark with Karras out as well. Like he's been phenomenal, and but especially on the open floor, man, like. It's like he's about to go up and do a 360 dunk, you know, and everybody, everybody goes crazy. But, you know, I, I, as soon as I give him the ball, I just go ahead and stand there and don't even waste my energy because I know he's going to make it and either get fouled or I don't, I don't want to jinx this, I'm not going to say, but he's, he's very successful when he gets fast break uh, layups. All right. Let's go, Thanks, Tom. Thanks, We're done. Thanks guys. Thank you. 